the German ideal. A combination of strength, determination, and purity. Hello, gentlemen. <coughs> my son, Adolf. Uh, that used to be my desk before I retired. Which is why you need to apply yourself at school. Stupid old fool. He's perfectly normal for a boy his age. He's got cursed on me for marrying my niece. Uncle, don't be absurd. So talented an artist, and what does he need with science and mathematics? Oh. Uncle. Uncle, what is it? <laughs> oh my God! Addy, Addy, quickly, come help me with your father. Uncle. I'm going to Vienna, mother. What? I want to see opera. Great opera. I want to study at the Fine Arts Academy. It's too far. You get lost. I've heard too many stories of Jews and gypsies taking advantage. I'm Should not be. a boy, Mother. She's very sick. She won't live until Christmas. She has cancer of the breast. I know it's hard. She'll do anything to ruin my career. You may begin. At the end of 30 minutes, I will collect the sketches, and this time tomorrow, the names of those who have passed this part of the examination will be posted on the door. Did you do well on your drawing exam? Are you accepted? Someday I shall be a great artist, Mother. I know you will. Angela, I know he's only your half-brother, but I want you to take care of him, as if he were your own. He's so sensitive. I don't know how he'll survive without me. Yes. Amen. I know it's hard, but you have to Don't be brave. Tell me how to feel. You didn't love her. She was only your stepmother. You wouldn't know how to love anyone. Just a lump. A peasant. Good for nothing but breeding more bitches like you. Sorry, Herr Hitler, you don't have a style. Your people are like little buildings. There's no life in them. Perhaps if you tried architecture or theatrical design. I'm truly sorry. I have a chance to teach. Best of luck.
waiting for my inheritance, that's all. It's the Jews for you, you know. Swarm into our country, steal the bread from our tables. Just ask our mayor. They are wolves. Yeah. Beasts of prey in human form. Warm into our country. Take the food from our mouths. And here we are, German and hungry. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm sorry, I thought. I thought you were a Jew. You look like one. My dearest sister, my studies are going very well here. My art is getting a lot of attention. I'll be famous before you know. I look forward to my upcoming birthday when my inheritance is due. I wonder, could you bring it in person? I'll wait for you in the railway station, under the big clock. Adi, it's you. Hello. Goodness, what happened? I thought you said you were doing fine. A bit bad luck. Do you have it? Well, she would have said something. You could have come home. Say hello to your Uncle Dolph, Gailey. <laughs> She's a shy girl, but very affectionate. <laughs> well, it's the Jews. It's the Jews, they are. Uh, they run the galleries and run by my paintings. The poles. They work for next to nothing, so I can't get a job. That's terrible. You know, there's plenty of work in Linz. <sighs> Must be joking. No, I'm serious. Here. Happy birthday. Our father worked hard for this. It's, it's the last place I would go. You can't stay here. Of course not. The sooner I leave this Babylon and races, the better. I'm off with the real Germans are.
Congratulations, Private Hitler. As you were one of only 600 to survive your baptism of fire. It's my privilege to promote you to the rank of corporal. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the war. I need one of you men to deliver a message. Here, Sergeant, take down. Take this to Lieutenant Goodman at the command post. Wait for a reply. Sit! Sit! Looks like your fiancé's got a mind of her own, Eddie. <laughs> Fox, sit! Sit! Everyone was killed. The entire company wiped out. Entire company, except me, of course. <laughs> Even my dog. My little foxel. Just seconds before the bomb landed. She led me outside as if she knew. She's so loving. So affectionate. And then in one brief moment, she's gone. No, she's not. I think she's in the stew. <laughs> Sorry. Joke. Put the pistol to my toe and bang! Take it home. For every toe you shoot off, ten men die because you aren't there to protect them. Battles are lost, ground is given up, ground that we've won through blood and sacrifice, that your brothers died for, and you sit there playing cards. That's enough. You owe your lives. Corporal, I will not put up with this. Well enough to walk. I'm sending you on leap. I want you gone by the morning. Yes, sir. Pacifists. Marxists. Socialists. Jews. They call themselves communists now. And they're everywhere except here. At the front. Who pissed in your brain? Please. Do you know any Jew soldiers? Look around you. Do you see any? I'm a Jew, buddy. So shut up and eat. as soon as possible. We don't have much time left. It's dangerous. If either of you makes it, you'll deserve an iron cross. Yes, sir. Go with God. Yes, Corporal? Nothing, sir. I followed your orders, sir. I deserve this medal. 
I risk my life. We all risk our lives every day. You gave me your word, Lieutenant. Believe me, if it was up to me. I did believe you. Anyone else would have laughed. What do you mean by that? I've always stood up for your people. When anyone said, oh, you can't trust them, I pointed to you, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm here to tell you you'll all be packing out in the morning. We're being deployed to the Eastern Front. Sir! Only 50 kilometers from Paris. You'll think we're on the retreat. Those are General Hindenburg's orders, Corporal. There's your prize. Now go tell the men on the front lines. Sir! No way to win a war. wouldn't do that. It irritates the eyes, swells the lids. But once we have these bandages off, you will see as well as ever. How long did it take to get back, to get back to the front? I don't think about that. Think of the future. You have a wife, a fiancé. I have to time. I have to get back. I have to get back to the front. Push. A message, head up. Push. Gentlemen, may I have your attention? I have an important announcement to make. Earlier today, the Army High Command agreed to negotiate the terms of surrender. The war is over. No! We must place ourselves now at the mercy of the victors. No! Pray that we'll be generous. No! The end. It's the beginning. led by Captain Ernst Röhm and others, took back the city today after a tense two weeks of communist rule. What happens now that Germany's best kept secret is out, that the demobilized soldiers of the war are still active and armed in our countrysides. Dr. Gerlich, you'll be late. Don't worry, Frau Schmidt. These things never start on time. <laughs> With the collapse of the monarchy and now the communist regime, what new form of government awaits us? Deep feelings of nationalistic pride are springing up against it. No, no, in defiance of the communists, of the allies, of anyone 
who thinks Germany is finished. All right, everybody, come on now. Let's get started. Let's get started. What are you doing here? Sorry. Sorry. Judge. Ah, Herr Gelly. Good day for the news. Bad for a wedding. Thank you for waiting. Well, I couldn't very well start without you. Officially, the Reds are gone. The army needs to make sure they stay gone. It's my job as head of army information to prevent the sort of civil unrest that happened last spring from happening again. I gather you're very outspoken in your nationalist leanings. Believe in Germany, sir. Good. There are nearly 50 political factions in this city at the moment. And I use informants to identify the more aggressive ones. Does this interest you? Informing, sir? One of these groups is the German Workers' Party led by a man called Anton Drexler. They gather in the back room of a beer hall. Just an excuse to have a drink, I expect, but pay them a visit and tell me what they're planning. But don't drink, sir. Just listen, then. But interest equals slavery. The Berlin-centered economy, which is currently collapsing, leaves us no other choice than to declare Bavarian independence. We have two more beers right away. The state of Bavaria must separate from the rest of Germany and form its own nation. Insane. Of course, we are a different society. We are predominantly Catholic. They are not. We're all German. Culturally, perhaps, there are similarities. But even then... What about Parsifal? Lohengrin. Young man, I'm talking about reality, not fairy tales. You're talking about the purity of the German people, which is no fairy tale. As I was saying, interest... Find out who he is. What's this? It's my report from the German Workers' Party, sir. I only ask for a few words. They've asked me if I'd like to join. I haven't accepted yet. Should we be concerned about them? That's all I need to know. Well, it's club life of the lowest form, sir. But I like the underlying politics. The nationalist agenda must include elimination of the Jews. What's this have to do with your report? There's some thoughts of my own I added. Do you disagree? It's just not feasible. Oh, it's very feasible, sir. Just drive them out. Deport them if necessary. Can you imagine a world without them? A pure, a holy. Do you think there are any Jews in Valhalla? Do you have my papers, Meyer? Yes, Captain Red. I should like to introduce you to Corporal Hitler, sir. He's one of our informants. If you'll excuse us, Corporal. He's an odd one, isn't he? It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker for this evening. Many of you may remember him by his comments at our last meeting. So please welcome Herr Adolf, Adolf Hitler. When I was a boy, I heard the story louder. I heard the story of the Holy Grail and how it could only be found by one who was pure of heart. Indeed, we have a history of purity in this country, but we have fallen on hard times. Our military is in tatters, our economy collapsing, but it's not poverty or weakness that's our problem. It's indifference. Is anyone listening? That's the problem nowadays, isn't it? No one cares. No wonder we face extinction.
pride. Pride is a weapon. A sword to be used against our enemies. But don't be deceived. They are strong. Stronger than we are. And it's not the French or the English I'm talking about. Our enemies live among us. Socialists. Communists. The foreign invaders who come to our country to destroy us and take over our lives! <laughs> In the six months since the fall of the communist government, the new German democracy has given birth to dozens of political factions, but none is growing more rapidly than the German Workers' Party, newly dubbed the Party of the National Socialists, whose fiery speaker, Adolf Hitler, preaches against the influence of foreign invaders. Who alone are responsible for the moral decadence that now riddles our society? The Jews! The Jews! Yes! Who call themselves German, but who are now, and who have always been, unwelcome, unwanted, and they are everywhere! <laughs> Invading our government, stripping us of our savings, raping our families and our heritage. I tell you, friends, this is war. A war that is soon to turn, for the invaders will become the victims! <laughs> Frieda. Harold Stengel. Oh, it's good to see you. Look at you. Who's this? Is this little Egon? Mm -hmm. He looks just like you did when you were his age. Frieda. This is my wife, Elena. She was raised in America, but don't worry. She's bred from good German stock. Her family's from Bremen. Oh, how do you do, Frau Stengel? I apologize for the mess. I I'll have it clean by morning. Perhaps... Frieda, don't worry yourself. It's lovely. It'll be just fine. Would you like to hold him? Yes, I'd love it. <laughs> He's so gorgeous. Come. <laughs> Do you like it? It's extraordinary. It's everything that you promised. And this isn't the half of it. There are such opportunities here for us now. Germany is starting to rebuild itself, and we are going to make pots of money. <laughs> Darling, it's impolite to talk about money. Mm, it'd be good for the country, too. Maybe you hear my plan. Don't bother me with your plans. You just let me handle the dinner party. Mm. Come in the front next time where people can see you. My supporters will slow me down. Seems it didn't empty tonight. Nonsense. The crowd is bigger than last time. Unfortunately, there are some communists out there. So, go easy on the rhetoric. A riot would only get us in the papers. Isn't that what we want? Universal military service shall be abolished in Germany. 
Germany will pay war reparations for all damage done to Allied civilians and their property. Responsibility for the outbreak of the war rests solely on German shoulders. But a few of the demands of the Treaty of Versailles. Impossible, you say. It will break us. But don't you see that's the point? They want to break us. And who do I mean by they? I mean the Reds! These fools who spread a disease called communism to empty-headed dreamers. Look who's talking! The most effective medicine is a bullet! That's the best way to cure us of these idiots! These idiots are men like you! Shut up! Nothing to say! Marx was a Jew! The Communist Party is run by Jews! It's all a plot to destroy Germany! To bastardize our blood! Infiltrate our lives! They want to wipe the Aryan race from the face of the earth! Fritz, you're writing. No, I'm just thinking, that's all. About? About what's happening. Munich, Bavaria, Germany. My three rivals. It's so exciting. Sophie, Germany is at the crossroads of history. We grew up with the Kaiser, telling us what to do, and we're finally thinking on our own. We have the communists on the left, the social democrats in the middle, the free corps joining forces with the right. It's one big political brawl. That doesn't worry you? Why should it? <sighs> Nothing good ever comes from brawls. When are you men going to learn that? Are you women going to learn that extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures? Yes, war, assassination. All right, all right. I won't argue with you on that. But I promise you, Whatever comes of this brawl will be extraordinary. Look, we need more men like you in the party. Oh, we hate the communists. Wherever they go, we'll go. Yes. Whether or not we'll do anything for the party is entirely up to you. Yeah. You know, I've always been a great admirer of yours. Your reputation, your war medals. Oh, my war medal is here. I'm prouder of this than of any Iron Cross. Speaking of me, Herr Hitler, you speak of all my men. We're all soldiers here. You see, these men, and together with thousands and thousands of others, served our country well. Even after they were abandoned by the army, they continued to fight to put down a communist revolution. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, the rich that backed us up are turning away. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. But if my men can crush a revolution that can also create one. Because they love this country as much as you or I do. Yes. The only little problem is they're unemployed. Yes. Not so long ago, we Germans thirsted after blood. We had half the world in trenches crawling through the mud. We were victory. How come we lost the war? Oh, my God, Ernst, is that you? Friedrich. Friedrich Hollander, my God, what are you doing here? I run this place. I direct this show. I write these songs. I am this place. <laughs> Freddie and I went to school together. We were uh, sparring partners. In the fencing club. That, too. And this beautiful lady is? His current sparring partner, Helena Hunstein. It's a pleasure to meet you. Friedrich Hollander. That's my wife. Poison gas. And now that we have seen we're not the same man that we were before. Everyone's depressed, which is bad for the economy, but excellent for cabaret. The German people don't need democracy, for God's sake. They need music, laughter, someone to tell them what to do so they can get in line and follow. Don't tell me you've become a nationalist. I'm a satirist, Ernst, the most dangerous politician of them all. <laughs> <laughs> you just fell and scraped your knee. It's time for fun and games again in Germany. 
speaking of humor, I'm going to hear Hitler tomorrow. Would you like to come? Hitler, the anti-Semite. The National Socialist anti-Semite. Call them Nazis just to piss them off. I hear he's fascinated. Oh, that's very open-minded of you. You mean for a Jew? Yes. I'm not supporting him, for God's sake. I need new material. That's what they tell us. What they mean is, they will survive. We surrendered in November, at a time when we were perched on the edge of victory. Betrayed by the cowards and the traitors within our ranks. How do we fight them? We unite. We must join together for a greater Germany. Clean him up a bit, he might be worth something. He's a cartoon. We will sacrifice. We will struggle, yes. But only then will we triumph. And we will triumph! <laughs> the hero Lundgren as our model, and the music of Wagner as our inspiration, we will hang the profiteers, crush the communists. We will disinfect our country of the Jewish moment. <laughs> Funny. After 500 years, you think I'd be used to it. Ernst. Ernst. We will trump! We will trump! We will trump! We will Excuse me, Herr Hitler. you speak last time. You mentioned Wagner. I was told I could find you here, that you never leave. Herr Hitler, I was wondering... Just... just play. I know some people who would love to hear you speak, who are not likely to go to a beer hall. The wealthy. I've met a few. Armchair politicians. Care more about their money than they do their own country. Yes, but surely as your party's propaganda leader, you must know that in order to defend their money, they'll spend it, a good deal of it. That is, if someone they trust tells them it's a safe bet. That's where I come in. Herr Hitler, I can make you very popular. Far more popular than him. But you have to admit, the color catches the eye. Why don't you have a poster? And the flag. Your picture should be everywhere, with your name in large letters. You might consider a more distinctive look. For example, when you think of Lenin, you think of bearded and bald. Not that that's attractive, but... Well, it does stick with you.
is we never talk so openly about politics in America. That's all we talk about here. Of course, there are some things we don't mention, such as Captain Rome and his recall. Now that the Reds are gone, they still want money. So what do we do? Don't talk to me about democracy. Masses can't lead themselves. In the old days, one man decided what was best for the country, and there was order and discipline. Now everyone votes on everything, and the result is chaos. I assure you, Baron, it works in America. There, they have states with governors under a president in Washington. Here, we have the Prussian state, the Bavarian state, and so forth, under a president in Berlin. The structure is essentially the same. It's not the same thing, Anston. You know it. Germans need to be led, preferably by a man we can control. It doesn't have to be smart, merely pliable. And a bachelor. So the women will vote for it. <laughs> well said, Captain Goering. This person you've invited tonight, Herr Hermstangel, he has the workers here? Some of the workers, but mostly the middle class, which is far better for our purposes. I think you'll find him rather persuasive. He is at the moment a diamond in the rough, though. And I do mean rough. Herr Hitler, I'm Helena, Ernst's wife. He's told me so much about you. Come. <coughs> now, with respect, the Kaiser's a coward. Better off without him, really. No, no, we need, we need someone with courage. Courage to drive out these foreign agitators. A man who would smile in the face of the machine gun and scare the rabble shitless. Would that be you, sir? No, Captain Goering. Not me, sir. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> Above all, we must remove the Jews. Mm. They run our banks. They lost us the war. They alone are responsible for the economic disaster we're in. Sir, my father was a Jew. And a stronger patriot could not be found at this table. I am the man I am today because of him. Baron. Surely he wasn't talking about your father. He meant the communist Jews. Didn't you, Herr Hitler? You will excuse us, Frau Hamstegel. Herr Hitler, please. Please accept my apologies. I'm sure he meant no disrespect. My husband and I have several Jewish friends in America. What this man is doing, madam, is heating up the hatred in this country to boiling point. And all for his own purposes, I might add. May God forgive you and your husband for supporting him. I too know what it's like to be mistaken in a friend. If he has deceived you as to his heritage, who knows what else he's capable of. You're a very gifted speaker, Herr Hitler. I think it is an honor to be at this table with you. I began life as a quite gifted artist, Captain Goering. And I brought something I want you all to see. Simple. Berion. What does it mean? It 
means the unconquerable. Do you like it, Fry Hamstangle? It's very hypnotic. Tell us, Herr Hitler, have you considered publishing? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. The turning point of my life was when the blindfold was stripped from my eyes. But only then will we triumph. And we will triumph. The Jew! In all his terrible shame, we will hang the profiteers. We recognize him. We recognize him. We will make them pay. We, uh... Who is this? My new friends. What are you arguing about? We have been approached by the German Socialist Party to join forces. Our principles are similar. We can negotiate a new platform to eliminate our differences, and together, both parties will be even stronger. Uh, some of the others here disagree. I see. Would you like to know what I think? Yes, of course. I think you're a traitor. But Herr Hitler... Compromise is not possible! If their members wish to quit their party and join ours, that's another thing. But our principles are our principles and cannot be changed. Once again, Drexler, you prove my point. This is a tedious... Amateur organization. And you are a jealous fool. Which brings me to this. Who wrote this? Don't pretend you don't know what it is. One of our own members calls me a dangerous demagogue. Are you out to destroy me? I tell you, sir, I don't need you or your party. I will form my own party. You're right. Of course, we will not merge if that is how you feel. There are some who question your financial ties. That is all. We are not a party of the bourgeoisie. It's, it's bound to have an impact. The leadership. What? I want you to step down. Name me as your successor. Yes, of course. The committee must approve unanimously. Then make a public announcement. I have your attention. The leadership committee has just made an important decision. I no longer feel qualified to lead our struggle. So it is my privilege to present you with our new leader, 
a new Führer. Adolf Hitler. No, no, a little higher. That's good. That's very good. Beautiful. Marvelous. No. No. Yes. Wonderful choice, my Führer. But don't you think this look is better? Excuse me, uh, Hitler. A message from Bavarian Prime Minister von Kahn. Seems I'm being asked to cancel my speeches. Not asked, ordered. The Chancellor wants to pay war reparations in honor of the Treaty of Versailles. As a consequence, the people are ready to riot. Carr's ordered a state of emergency, place himself in charge. He adds If Hitler speaks, it may only stir things up. Stir things up. Stir things up. Have you been to the marketplace? Do you know how much it costs for a loaf of bread these days? 500,000 marks. 500,000 marks. The wheelbarrows aren't big enough to carry the money in. And he's afraid I'll stir things up. You tell Commissar Carr. This is not a time for silence. This is a time for revolution. Right. Well, I suppose that leaves me. I know you're upset. Of course you are. Commissar von Kahn is acting rashly. Herr Hitler, you mustn't take it personally. We both want the same thing. Right now, von Kahn thinks that he doesn't need you. You must be clever and show him that he does. That you have the support of the people. Hmm? I want to show you something. This is an article by an editor named Fritz Gehrlich that is, on the whole, complimentary. Everyone who's anyone reads him. And he also happens to write Commissar von Kahr's speeches. I think you should pay him a visit. I baked these this morning. I hope you like them. You must have been very brave, Herr Hitler. The Iron Cross is no small feat. Thank you, dear. I've heard you speak, uh, Hitler. You're very persuasive. You know, we share some beliefs. The need for a political leader, a strong voice to guide. Yes, well, we need someone to take charge. Throw out this Treaty of Versailles. Refuse to pay the war reparations. 
What's that? Oh, uh, uh, it helps me to keep notes during an interview. Huh? That way, when I get back... This isn't an interview. What made you think that? Carl's a fool. I know he's your friend, but he has to realize I am not the enemy. If he wants to make a stand against Berlin, fine. I won't stop him. In fact, I should be his partner. But you have fundamental areas of disagreement. You both wish to lead. Lead? I have no ambition to lead. So long as Carl keeps us a place in his government, that's all we want. A little, little piece of the cake, as it were. You know, you know, we could use a man like you. You could perhaps write for us. On behalf of the National Socialist Party? Yes. <laughs> but I don't write. Propaganda. Who said anything about propaganda? I'm talking about the truth. Look around you. Immigrants, Jews, stealing everything we work for. Not the German Jews. Any party that comes to power will surely guarantee that. We're talking about Jews here! They're not citizens. They have no rights. You're supposed to be a nationalist. You should know better. Never compromise on the Jews. He's insane. A complete psychotic. He may be a compelling speaker on stage, but in person, I could see into his eyes, and what I saw was terrifying. And I intend to shut him down. With all due respect, Commissar Ankar, you need to handle him with care. Don't worry, I will. I know how to deal with Adolf Hitler. There were over 40 political matters last weekend. Reds killing SA, SA killing Reds. General von Lusso and Colonel Seize here are very concerned, as am I. Well, if my party had a voice in your government, perhaps we might find less violent ways of expressing ourselves. Which is exactly what I'm prepared to offer you. In a few weeks' time, General von Lotso and Colonel Seize intend to march on Berlin, a putsch, to bring the national government under our control. Would you like to be part of that putsch? Yes, of course. Then you must be very quiet. You can speak, give the impression of business as usual, but you must also promise me if you wish to play any part in our government, there will be no more violence. Berlin mustn't believe we have designs against them. You have my full support. Just keep your men quiet. Can't do that. Of course you can. You're the leader. They listen to you. I pay them to listen it's to you. It's not a question about money, it's the principle. If there's a red anywhere near, there's gonna be a fight. Look, I don't care how you do this. Just keep them quiet. You won't listen. You have to find some other way, some kind of figurehead. Make it tighter. So, how is your father, Hess? Very well, General Ludendorff. He sends his best. <laughs> Who is this? May I present Herr Hitler to you, sir? I believe you've met before. One of Captain Goering's soirees. Oh, yes. Um, what uh, can I do for you? No, no, that's too tight. Let it out. 
Your Excellency is the um, heroic leader of the nationalist right, while I am but its spokesman. No, no, more, more. I can't breathe. I was wondering if I could perhaps discuss a little plan I have. We are confident of gaining Your Excellency's support. Support? For what? We're planning a transference of power. Bavarian Commissar von Kahr has seen the wisdom of joining the National Socialists for a march in Berlin. Well, good for you. Those idiots at the Reichstag haven't learned the lesson, so kick them out. We need true Germans running this country again, like we had with Bismarck. I knew him, you know. Hmm? Mm. My God, what a man. So, what's your plan? And can you carry this off? I won't be made a fool of, you know? Your Excellency, we are confident of our success. Mm. By the way, I'm, I'm speaking next week at the Circus Krona. I would be honored if you would be my guest. For many years, my friends, I was like a prisoner, blindfolded, fending off blows from every direction. What had I done to deserve this treatment? I did not even know who my enemy was. An innocent victim of greed and of hatred and of cunning. In recent years, we have all suffered like this. Germany, more than any of us. Yet there is no need to live in darkness. The turning point in my life was when the blindfold was ripped from my eyes. And I could see my enemy, our enemy, the Jew. We recognize him. We recognize him. Nobody leaves. No one. We see how his filth and his greed have stung at the heart of this great country. We must crush this vermin. We must wipe this plague from our nation. What we say tonight will soon be forgotten. What we do will live on for a thousand, thousand years. Losa said we had to wait two more weeks before they take action. Zeiser was in Berlin. Some important meeting. Carr wouldn't see me. But in two days, he intends to address all the right-wing political factions at one of their beer halls. All of them. That is, except you. He's outfoxed you, man. He clearly intends to form a coalition with all of your competitors and create a new government without you. He brought you into this simply to keep you quiet. We'll move without them, then. We'll seize Munich. We'll march on Berlin. The people are with us. Listen to them. Gentlemen, our time has come. Confront car here. Rome and his men wait here. We surround the barracks, then attack. Once the situation is secure, I'll telephone Rome here at the beer hall. Half of my men will cut the lines at the telephone exchange. The rest of us will secure the military barracks. No information in or out of Munich, unless I say so. Gentlemen, I know this is often said and deeply felt. 
but none more deeply than tonight. May God and the people of Germany be with us. Brothers, you and I, together, we will make history. Your papers, please. I couldn't sleep last night worrying about this speech. His popularity is rising. If people don't hear the truth... Don't worry, they will. Tonight, we unify the other parties and put an end to that awful plan. us to the edge of chaos. And now we have a choice. Act like bees, bees act like men. They both need training now and then. Oh, we can with courage and faith. Leap! What's coming? The National Revolution has begun. The building is surrounded. No one may leave. Any trouble, you will be shot. Inside. Inside! Stay calm. Remain in your places. We have the building surrounded. Get me a little more. Sorry to surprise you like this, but then you're no stranger to intrigue, are you? I'm forming a provisional Reich government. I will be in charge of the police. General Ludendorff will be in charge of the army. And I will have a post for each of you. I need your support. You seem to have planned this well. Then where is General Ludendorff? If he supports you as you say he does, why is he not here? Oh, so the little man pulled it off, did he? Give me a moment. Keep your head! He's a little late. What's going on? You sure he's coming at all? Shut up! He's here. Your leaders are with us. Will you join them? Will you stand behind us? The German Revolution begins tonight. Group heading towards the barracks. You mean 
Something fell back. I can't believe this is happening. Nobody does anything right. That's your conscience. Conscience. A Jewish invention, sir. Conscience. Do you mind if we visit our wives, General? They'll be worried. Of course, of course. Mustn't worry, the poor women. Mobilize the army. Now. What the hell's happening? There are too many of them. Somebody must have betrayed us. What are you doing here? Where's Carr and the others? Oh, I let them go. Their wives were a concern. Well, that's all right. They gave me their word. They would notify the authorities. Good God! Follow me! Let's go. We'll take to the streets. Oh. We'll take to the streets. We'll go to the war ministry. There were 8,000 people at the circus crowner the other night. As soon as they know what's happening, they will support us. It's me. I've got to get out. It's all gone sour. Don't let anyone in. I want you to take the children and go to your mother's. Ernst, what happened? I'll call you there. Frida! Frida! I know a safe place. Turn right up ahead. Right. Oh. 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 Rita! Rita, stop it! Shut up! Shut up! 
Herr Hedler. He's on a hunger strike. If he doesn't testify or worse, if he dies, they'll come after everyone, including us. Get out of your mind. Elena, someone has to answer for the putsch. For God's sake, it was treason. He won't listen to his men. If he likes you, all you have to do is shore up his confidence. No. Helena! Our lives, our future, depend on this. myself. You mustn't lose hope. So many people believe in you. Do you? The first time I saw you, I knew that you were a great man. Let us proceed. General Ludendorff, you have been accused of high treason. How do you plead? Not guilty. Adolf Hitler, you have been accused of high treason. How do you plead? Are you a German citizen? You're talking about a piece of paper or the blood that runs through my veins. <laughs> Answer the question. No. In November of last year, you led a putsch against the Bavarian state and German Reich. You coerced and threatened Commissar Carr, General Lasso and Colonel Zeisser. You have been accused of high treason and called an enemy of the state. If a thief takes your money and you take it back, does that make you also a thief? In 1918, we were betrayed by the November criminals, the ones who claimed to be our leaders. They entered the war signed the Treaty of Versailles, and that 
was high treason. This is supposed to be an interrogation, not a speech. I was simply taking back that which was stolen from us five years before. Namely, the right. The right to defend ourselves against the wishes of an incapable parliament. I used no force. I used no force. I was supported by Commissar Khan. Why isn't he on trial? If I am guilty of anything, then I am guilty of fighting to defend the rights of the German people. Fascinating, isn't he? I was absolutely convinced that it would be over. That he would be exposed as cold-blooded and psychotic. But they cheered him, Sophie. Hitler stood up in the court of law and claimed that all he wants is to give the nation back to its people. And the people believed him. Even the judge was impressed. Let's figure this out. Figured who are. People. You've met him. He's not human. He's studied people in order to appear human, but all he's discovered is our fear and our hatred. And now we're all running toward a monster we should be running from. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. You said that once, remember? And all those drunks in the beer halls were throwing mugs at each other. I told you nothing good would come of it. I was then. Come inside now, I'll fix you something to eat. Fritz? Thank you. For what? Listen, everybody, we have a new front page. On the night of the putsch, Commissar von Kahr was promising an initiative that would have turned this country around had he been heard. I know because I wrote it. Tonight, we are the voice of sanity. Listen, history has brought us to the edge of chaos and we now have a choice. Either we can jump into the abyss or with courage and faith, leap to the other side. I demand freedom! The abyss is Hitler's party of national freedom. socialism, a party of intolerance and hatred, false imagery and false hope, a pit of nonsense and outright lies. They are the ones who deserve to be hung! He's an agitator. He believes our fears will drown out our reason. And the worst we can do, the absolute worst, is to do nothing. All right, let's get to work. Traitor! General Ludendorff, the court finds you not guilty and releases you from custody. Herr Hitler, Court finds you guilty of treason. Yes! You are hereby sentenced to a fine of 200 gold marks and five years in Landsberg prison. You will, you will be eligible for parole in 
Leinwand. 